This presentation is on a performance audit by the Queensland Audit Office on managing water quality in the Great Barrier Reef catchments. The Queensland Audit Office delivers financial and performance audit services to give assurance to Parliament and the community about the performance and accountability of the public sector. We are committed to helping the public sector improve. Performance audits assess whether an entity is achieving its objectives economically, efficiently and effectively and is complying with relevant laws. On the 10th of June 2015, the Auditor General tabled his performance audit report, Managing Water Quality in the Great Barrier Reef Catchments. The Great Barrier Reef is the Earth's largest coral reef system and was listed as a World Heritage Site in 1981 for its outstanding universal value to humanity. This unique reef system is valued around the world and is critically important to local communities and industries supporting recreation and livelihoods. Commencing with the first reef water quality protection plan in 2003, the Australian and Queensland governments have worked to reduce the impacts of the diffuse source water pollutants that arise from broad scale agricultural land use. Both governments have continued to collaborate through two further iterations of the reef plan, in 2009 and in 2013. Environmental Protection Act 1994 makes the Department of Environment and Heritage Protection primarily responsible for reducing the impacts of agricultural activities on the quality of water entering the reef. However, the programs and activities that have been attributed to achieving reef plan goals are being delivered across a number of departments. Each of the departments spends part of the $175 million that was committed by the state over five years under the 2013 reef plan. Given the widely accepted nexus between land and agricultural management practices and pollutants entering the reef, we examine the effectiveness of the major programs and activities that aim to improve land and catchment management, the governance over and the design of these state programs, the program for monitoring the quality of water entering the reef, and the reliability of the associated public reporting of reef plan outcomes. Five Queensland Government Departments play significant roles in the delivery of the Reef Plan. We also spoke with officers from the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, the Australian Institute of Marine Science, industry bodies and conservation groups. We found that while there is a Reef Plan, there is no cohesive state-based program to support its achievement. The, Qu the Queensland Government's response to its Reef Plan commitments has lacked the programmatic rigour needed to address the serious issues of poor quality water entering the reef from catchments. Queensland's response has lacked urgency and purpose, characterised by disparate projects with no central authority and no clear accountability for their delivery or for achievement. Land management practice programs are not achieving the changes needed to realise the Reef Plan goal within the established timelines and the extent and sustainability of change is not being comprehensively monitored at the farm scale. In the more than 12 years since the first reef plan, Queensland has yet to develop an overarching program for its contribution. Many of the initiatives that departments attribute to the achieving the reef plan goal existed before the original reef plan in 2003. Some do not have improvement of water quality as their primary objective and have not aligned their objectives to the achievement of reef plan targets. While the targets may be ambitious, this does not lessen the need for targeted responses, nor does it obviate the need for strong accountability to ensure that the funds committed under the plan have been invested in a coordinated way, and that they are being used to produce the greatest advancement towards the targets. Improving agricultural land management practices in the sugarcane and grazing industries is a key strategy of the RIF plan. Results indicate that the right balance has not been achieved between industry-led voluntary approaches and the regulatory enforcement. The limitations that result from the missing rigour and overall program design are evident in the lack of clear, appropriate incentives and disincentives in the design of these voluntary best management practice programs. In agricultural improvement programs, like the Smart Cane BMP program, the balance between producing more, making more money and looking after the environment is tilted towards the former two. This deliberate strategy is intended to encourage industry participation in these voluntary programs. However, more specific, direct incentives to give the voluntary programs the best chance of success are missing. There is no alignment between accreditation and eligibility for grant programs. However, the latest round of the REEF program and REEF trust funding in the Fitzroy and Wet Tropics 
does at least require producers to have completed a BMP self-assessment in the relevant module to receive grant funding. The lack of state incentives undermines the value of being an accredited producer or participating in the improvement activities. The recent relaxation of land clearing rules also increases the risk of adverse consequences from sedimentation runoff. Such conflicts between improving agricultural production while reducing runoff would be more apparent and better managed through a single point of responsibility. Those responsible should have the requisite authority and clear accountability for delivering on the environmental imperatives of the reef plan. Preliminary results from the vegetation management programs indicate a rise in woody vegetation clearing rates over the last four years in reef catchments. Increases in tree clearing rates may contribute to increased soil erosion. This result is counterproductive as it increases the risk of runoff. It also has the potential to contradict the reef plan targets. Outputs from the Paddock to Reef Program catchment model are used to estimate progress towards the water quality targets and, along with the other lines of evidence, produce a report card. Experts agree that the model is sophisticated and meets the needs of the program. However, government and external independent reviews have determined that inputs are required to input data. Not all of these deficiencies have been addressed to date. More work is needed to improve the effectiveness of monitoring to better verify outputs and close the current gaps. There are gaps in the knowledge between the paddock and end of the river catchments and there is a need to account for climatic variability, all of which require several assumptions to be made to produce modelled results. Ecological processes between the paddock and marine environments are not extensively monitored and well understood. The lack of water quality monitoring sites to verify modelled outputs to measured results across the catchment necessarily results in lower levels of confidence that the quality of water entering the reef is actually improving. The headline reporting on progress does not make this lack of confidence clear to the reader, potentially allowing them to incorrectly infer that reported results as unequivocal established fact. The water quality and land management improvement targets set in the 2013 reef plan are unlikely to be achieved under the current level of practice change. Yet this outcome is not as evident as it should be because of what is publicly reported and how it is reported. The latest Great Barrier Reef report card released in June 2014 stated that the goal to halt and reverse the decline in water quality entering the reef had been achieved. But there is significant uncertainty associated with the progress reported to date. Therefore, the veracity of this statement needs to be treated with caution. Overall, the Department support the recommendations we have made and have already progressed to implementing change. We trust that this presentation has been of value to you. The full report can be found on the Queensland Audit Officer's website. Thank you.